Well, hey, 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 everybody. <clears throat> it's your old chubby buddy, Rip One. The one that's got the barbecue on his shirt. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, let's get started on a little ride here for lunch break. We got a few things we want to talk about. So, as we pass the old White House mailbox here, we'll ask somebody to roll the intro. We got something we want to talk about today but first of all before we get into talking about that what was for lunch well me and Susan she got up early this morning and put on some ribs just one rack of ribs on the pellet smoker a pellet grill and we had uh, we had, I guess you'd call them Western style baked beans. I grew up calling them poking beans, but son, they were good, I guarantee you. But the ribs, the ribs were smoked to perfection. If you don't believe me, let me put a picture of them ribs right down there. What else did we have? Some people call them uh, armadillo eggs. Maybe they ain't armadillo eggs, I don't know. Uh, we got them from the butcher shop up around Hattiesburg. And it, they call them butcher bombs. And it's a chicken thigh with rolled up green onion pork sausage up in it. And then they wrap it and tie it up with bacon. <laughs> Oh yeah, had a heart attack, huh? I guarantee you, but uh, that's what we had. We had, we'll call them butcher bombs. We had butcher bombs and we had smoked ribs and some Western style baked beans or parking beans. We used to go fishing and things like that and hunting and all, and we carried beanie weenies. Y'all remember, y'all remember the beanie weenies? Yeah, I've eaten many a can of them. We used to go fox hunting and all that out here at night, coon hunting. We'd take Benny Winnies and throw them in the fire and let them, let them heat the can up. And then we'd pop that top off of that can. <laughs> yeah, I'd say that's the way to do it. Got a question though. I got a, a few questions though that I want to try to answer and the reason I have this topic here is because y'all remember a few weeks ago when I went and got to Pressel let me tell y'all what we're riding first I guess it doesn't matter though I just grabbed something whatever I could find handy that had a charge on it and that was the uh, the Ansky E300 and that's what I'm riding but yeah, when I went and got the pretzel the other day, and I just happened to be riding the free air Eden then, there was a man and woman there that he pulled up there in a van and was eating their pretzel. They had set them up some chairs and a little table out there in the parking lot. I mean, they wanted to get their pretzel fresh and they wanted to eat it right there, so they just made them a little picnic right there. Well, they parked right there by where I had the Eden parked at. So I got my pretzel, I walked over there and wrapped it up, put it in the basket there, and I was fixing to boogie on down the road. And the man asked me a question. He said, what is that you're riding? I said, that's an e-bike. He said, what's an e-bike? I said, well, it's an electric bike. He said, 
You mean to tell me it's got a motor on it? And I said, of course. It's got an electric motor. Well, he, what, where's the motor? I had to show him where the motor was at. Had to, I told him, you know, showed him where the battery was. All that good things. And I just couldn't get over the fact that somebody would live so far under a rock these days and times that they wouldn't know what the e-bike was. But to tell you the truth about it, I go to thinking about it, there is a lot of people, especially around these necks of the woods where I live, that don't even know they exist. And I want to try to make a video, and I'm going to put the... I'm going to put a, the, the uh, topic on the thumbnail, maybe like what it is is a knee bike or something something of that nature. Ain't figured out yet which way I'm going with that. But I just want to try to enlighten people. And then you got some people, how many of you has ever been out riding and then you'll, you'll pass somebody, old Steve Crow up there in West Monroe, he, was his, he had a video here a while back. And there was a man asking him all kind of questions. And I'm sitting there, as he was asking Steve the questions, I was sitting there asking the same questions because I, I had predicted. I knew exactly what the man was going to ask. Because I've heard the same thing before, and y'all have too. If It doesn't matter if you're a YouTuber or, or you're just a bike rider. You're just an owner and a rider. You, hey, you've been questioned by people that had no idea that something like that exists. And I wrote down a, a question here. The man asked me, he said, is that thing hard to pedal? And I said, no. Well, that's when I told him it had the motor on it. He said, and he couldn't just couldn't get over it that it had a motor on it. He said, really? So that's when I broke down and got to showing him all things. Then the next question come up was, how far will it go? <laughs> that's the way you ask me, is how far, F-U-R, how far will it go? And my question, uh, my answer to him was, you know, it varies. It varies with the rider size and the battery size and the voltage but I'm gonna say probably on an average around 40 maybe 45 miles on one that's got a, like a 20 amp hour battery something like that uh, some lighter batteries may only get you 30 something like that you know so I think that's a good round number and if y'all have any comments you can be sure to leave them in the comments I'm sure you will but the, the next, next thing he asked, and these are not just questions that he asked, these are questions that other people have asked. Another question that you may have heard some, some, some of these folks say is how fast will it go? And I'm just going to say again, that is going to vary with the motor wattage. You know, typically these bikes are what? One horsepower, something like that? And, you know, most of these bikes are going to run anywhere from 28 or 25, I would say 25 to 28 mile per hour. Top speed, okay? Look out, squirrel. There's the old cows there. Let's stop and look at the cows here a minute. Hey, mama. Anyway. Yeah, how fast will it go? I'm going to say anywhere from 20, 28, something like that. Uh, you know, I ride in Joey's Velotrick, and it just runs uh, 20. That's the top speed for it. But I think you can unlock it. Most bikes can be unlocked and what have you. Somebody asked me one time how long it takes to charge that battery. You know, and again, that's going to vary between... Uh, how big the battery is and things like that. 
I'm, I'm going to say, you know, anywhere from six to eight hours to charge it completely. I had somebody ask me one time, say, how much does it cost you to charge that battery? <laughs> y'all, I'm going to tell y'all right now, I wouldn't even entertain that question, okay? We're trying to give it, provide an answer for that. I just pretended I didn't even hear that. I don't. I won't even address nothing like that. Yeah, how much does it cost to charge the battery? Yeah, I just, you know, just trying to address some questions. Like, you know, if I really want to know about something and uh, and that, and it's a little bit above my head, I want. Old Denzel Washington said one time in that movie Philadelphia, he says. Talk to me like I'm a two-year-old. Well, that, that's, that's what I want somebody to do to me. If it's something that I feel like I'm gonna have a little difficulty understanding, talk to me like I'm a two-year-old and where I can understand it. So that's what I try to do, is try to answer these questions where everybody out there, if you have, if you have zero knowledge of an e-bike, maybe we'll enlighten you a little bit on it. The next question that I will mention and it's one that I'll guarantee you that every one of y'all have heard at one time or the other. Ain't that cheating? You know, and I'm gonna answer that by saying this, and I'm not trying to be a smart aleck, but I'm gonna say while you ask that question, I want you to just go ahead and sit on your couch and eat your Blue Bell ice cream and then worry about if my e-bike is cheating. And that's, that's, that's all I'll say about that. Where they make them at? Where you make them at? I've heard that one before. Y'all probably, how many percent of them comes from China? 90, 95, 99? It's only just a very, just a very few that are made in the United States. I, and I probably wouldn't be able to uh, quote those companies. Maybe I would try, but I'd probably miss it. There's the old Edmund Fitzgerald there. But most of them are made in China and they ship them over here to a warehouse, usually in uh, what, Ontario, California, somewhere like that. I know Mooncool's got factories up in Jersey, places like that, and a, and a, and a uh, distribution center in uh, Texas. Yeah, over in East Texas. But I, I can say this, that if the bikes aren't made in China, most of the components are, wouldn't you say that? Somebody may have a question like, well, what, what if I can't ride one like that? Well, I'll have a response for that. I'm gonna call it the trike, the trike. Now, whether it's electric trike, whether it's moon cool, whether it's ad motor or whatever, uh, I mean, I like moon cool. But, you know, they've got trikes out there for people to ride that has mobility issues and balance issues. Look at it this way. You may not even have uh, good legs, you know. You may not even be able to pedal a bike. You may not even be able to pedal a trike. Well, you know, you can just use your throttle only. And uh, it'll get you on down the road. Everybody's gonna ask. Y'all remember whenever I uh, I fell down there in uh, Waveland? That dude, as I was turning, that guy was like, "Hey, dude, how about you pay for that bike?" <laughs> yeah, go back and find that video and say, "Hey, listen to him." He said, "Hey, dude, how about you pay for that bike?" You know, that's a good question. You can buy bikes for under a thousand. This bike here is under a thousand. But I'm gonna say this, that most bikes that are under priced under a thousand is gonna be around the 20 inch size, maybe mechanical brakes, things like that. I'm not gonna get into all the particulars and the fine details of them. That's, that's for another day, y'all. Maybe that's for some of y'all to do a video on. We're just talking about 
talking to somebody like they're a two-year-old, like they don't know anything about e-bikes. But I'm gonna say that for, for the most part, on average, I'm gonna say the average would be somewhere around fourteen to fifteen hundred dollars. And the response that we hear from that is fourteen hundred dollars. <laughs> yep, that's that's always that was my response. The first time I checked on the price of one was down at McLeod Park, riding uh camping down that way. And I saw a man and woman ride by on one. I went, I went and uh, got my phone and I, I googled e-bike and I looked at Hemiway because that's what they were riding, and it was fifteen hundred dollars for one just like the Magicycle Cruiser that I first purchased. So it was a big, it was a big uh, decision for me to make to spend fifteen hundred dollars on something I didn't even know. I thought I might be getting scammed. I didn't know if I'd ever get this thing. I mean, y'all have heard me tell that story. I won't go through the whole story again. I've just heard, I've just, I was very reluctant. And I see people out there today that are very reluctant. Yeah, I see people out there on the Facebook pages and the groups and stuff, the Moon Cool groups, the Free Dare group, Magicycle. People are very reluctant. I just got placed my order for a bike. I sure hope it comes in. Hope it, you know, hope everything's well. And then, when, hey, if it goes a few days and they don't get a a tracking number, boy, they just go, they just go off the wall, you know, on the company. It's just because people are so worried about making a purchase like that from a Chinese company, for the most part. But now, let me ask you, let me tell you that it brings up the next question. So where can I find one? If you don't want to deal with dealing with the, uh, the possibility of, you know, with dealing with the Chinese companies and stuff like that, hey, there's local bike shops, probably not very far from you. And you can see several different models they will be able, you'll have somebody their own hand that will be able to describe them to you, describe all the details and the specs on them, and they'll even let you test ride them. Yeah, your local bike shops. Most of them you'll be able to find in Abington. That's probably the primary one. And maybe a different, a couple different other uh, brands. But it's either that or either order online. They got hundreds of companies out there that you can order from. But I will tell you this, that people who don't know what they are will be very skittish, to say the least, of doing that, of ordering online. Brings up another question, does it come with a warranty? Yes. Everyone that sold will come with a warranty. How good that warranty is, that's, that's based on what the company's uh, reputation of dealing with warranty issues. Because I've heard good and I've heard bad from every company out there. You take a company like Electric. Electric is probably one of the most popular and they tell me it's one of the best to deal with. But I've seen people have problems with Electric. Most companies, will will honor their warranty as far as they'll ship you the parts that you need for your, for your repair some companies will even pay a bike shop to fix your bike for you some companies won't some companies won't return your email some companies don't have a phone service i mean you're looking at man the only way i can tell you to deal with this is is do your research. We call it doing our homework. And I see I skipped one, but there was a question that I throwed out here. Just, I probably never had anybody 
asked me this, but I figured I would just go ahead and mention it. But some people want to know how many different styles there are. I mean, is it just one style or, you know, I can tell you that primarily there is 20 inch bikes and there are 26 inch bikes. Now I do know they have some in-betweens, okay? But again, we're not getting into those, that fine details. We'll leave that with y'all. You got step overs, you got step unders, you got folding bikes, you got bikes that will fit in your cooter hull. You got bikes that you have to have a rack to haul if you're gonna haul them on your vehicle, on your car, on your truck. Just a lot of different different aspects of the e-bikes to look at there. I put a few pictures up on the screen and uh, you know and you can see pictures of a 20 inch bike with these tall handlebars like this on the front. Like this Ansky E300 that I'm riding. I'll get you a picture of that. Then here I'll show you one with a 26 inch bike that's a step over. Then we'll put you a 26 inch bike that's a step, step through. I like the step throughs because uh, you know, of having trouble swinging my legs over, but I, I do manage it. Let's see what they're doing to my jet yonder. Oh, they're getting me, they're getting me uh, fueled up, y'all. We're fixing to take a trip. We're going to go a trip out west. They're getting me geared up to go on a little trip. I'm going to go around, and, uh, around the country and ride e-bikes with different ones with some of y'all. How y'all like that? But yeah, they's all different kind of styles, y'all. I'm just gonna go back to, if you don't know what you're looking at, go to a bike shop and get you some ideas, even if you don't buy it from there. They won't mind you coming in and looking and asking questions. Yeah, local bike shop. Somebody would ask me a question about is it safe? Can I fall? Yes, you can. It's not a matter of if it's if you're gonna fall. It's a matter of when it happens, okay? All I'm saying is be prepared. Be prepared for it. Take you a, get you a first aid kit and put on that bike. Somewhere. If you have to duct tape it on there. Be prepared for a fall. I see a lot of people on the Facebook groups that will ask questions like, can I carry my pooch and my pussycat on it? Well, I see some people, they tie their dog to the handlebar here and let them pull them down the road or, or just let them run along beside it. That's all good. I don't have animals, so I, I can't tell you any uh, I can't give you a relatable experience that I've had. Some people take their cats, they put that pussy cat in a little old basket and they put it up here in the front on the basket. It's got, most of them have baskets that you can uh, attach to the bikes, carry your cat. Yeah, answer to that, yes. You just have to make sure your bike is gonna be able to accommodate that. Then I'm gonna answer another question here. Can I carry my young'uns on it? And I'm gonna answer that like this. Yes, you can. I see people doing that all the time. Would Rip One do that? Absolutely not. Because why? Because I fell one time and I busted my butt. And I would not want to bruise up and beat up and bang up my young'uns legs and arms and possibly their head. I, 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 I would not do that. I would not do that. I would make other accommodations for them babies. I ain't gonna pull them. I ain't gonna pull them around behind me on no little cart, no. Because if somebody hits that cart, that's something that I could never, I could never outlive. Now, if you're in a little park, that's different. Let me, let me just throw that in there. But if it's a little common place where people go and they walk and they take their kids and they push them in a stroller, I'm sure 
that you could possibly put your child in a little buggy and pull it along or, or put it in a basket, something or another behind you and roll him uh, and, and ride him along or her along and hey, everything will be good and happy. But as far as taking my child and putting my child out on Ridge Road right here or on some public street, nope, ain't done that. Ain't gonna do that. So, but if you do it, that's that's simply your business. But somebody would ask me, said, "Well, what, what other kind of uses would you have for it?" And I'm gonna answer that by saying, there are people that use them to go back and forth to work, to college, have a have a way at college to, uh, you know, romp around the campus and things like that. Go back and forth to you job and what have you. Uh, Billy Wayne down here that digs dirt, Billy Wayne uses it for hunting. Him and Mark Schomer. They got, they got both of them's got Magicycle Cruisers. They use them for hunting. I seen YouTubers that had, uh, had them an old Coke box stove back there and they had them uh, some PVC pipe and they'd made them a rod holder and they used it to go fishing with. You know, that's not a bad idea right there. Every time they call me and they say, your prescription's ready at Walgreens. Hey, we're going to load up on a bike if, we, if it's weather's uh, permitting. And a lot of times, if we're not in no big hurry, we don't care, you know. We don't care if we have to wait a few days till the weather does get right so we can ride our bike to Walgreens. You can go to Wal Walmart, lock, get you a lock, and lock it up somewhere. So yeah, you've got all kind of things you can do with it. So yeah, plenty of things. I, in fact, uh, when we grilled on our pellet grill this morning, I got down there and got to looking. I said, you know, we fixed now to make another run to Walmart and get some more pellets for our pellet grill. Now I like to use the I use I like to use the TK1 or the MC350 for that. Got that big old basket in the back. You can throw three or four bags of uh, pellets in there and get on down the road. So just a few questions I wanted to try to answer. You know, not getting into all the nitty gritty details and what have you, all the fine particulars. Just wanted to cover some of the, talk to me like I'm a two year old stuff. You know what I mean? Talk to me like I've never seen an e-bike before. I don't have no idea what that is. Mm -hmm. and, but I'm sure I probably forgot some of the uh, I'm sure I probably forgot some of the major ones that I should have mentioned, but hey, I'll leave y'all and throw some comments in there. What what are some of the questions that you've had, you know? You may want to enlighten someone, you know. Hey, somebody might ask you, what's the bad thing you riding right there? You know, said, hold on just a minute, old Rip One's got a video. He's going to sling it right out there to you where you can understand it. That's right. My final thoughts on this is, my final thoughts is, my final thoughts on this are, it very good possibility that it could change your life like it did mine. If you would have asked me three, four years ago, hey, Richard, Come June of 2022, are you gonna have an e-bike? I would say, man, what you been smoking? Or what you been drinking? But I'll tell y'all something, what it's done for me, money, you can't be placed on that. You can't place a value on the experience that I've had fooling with the e-bike. I, and I don't care if I've got 20 or if I've got two. I don't care if I just got one. What that bike has done for me has has been, it's changed the way I look at things, you know. A day like this goes by without getting out for a ride, man, I feel like I have missed it. Y'all tell me what y'all's thoughts about that. Just something y'all give us some thought to, you know, and yeah, if people ask y'all some questions about Think about, think about what your son's gonna say to them. They don't know anything about a torque sensor. They have no idea what hydraulic brakes brakes are. They don't know what a 1428 compared to an 1128 is. So don't, don't doctor them up with 
the unnecessaries like that. I just want to talk to people like they know nothing about it. They do know what a bike is. Unless they've been living under a rock in Antarctica somewhere, they do know what a bike is. So now let's transfer that into an electric bike and tell them all the benefits and everything. All the, the good experiences that you can get by owning one. Uh, how you can come together as a family, such as the brothers of the back roads do, that we come together every once in a while and we ride. The benefits of that. And as old Forrest Gump says, that's about all I got to say about that. All right, y'all, we're going to get on over the road. Hey, if you got any questions you want to email me about, look down there in that lower left-hand corner. Shoot me an email. If you decide you want to buy a bike, look at the, all the links that I got in my description right there. I'd appreciate it if you use that link while you're making your purchase and look for discount codes while you're at it. See what kind of discount codes they got there to help you save a few, maybe one, two hundred dollars off your purchase. If you found some kind of value, if y'all enjoyed this, you want to see some more like it, hit that subscribe, hit that like, and hit that bell notification. And for more Rip One Outdoors, to all of you, we appreciate y'all watching. We'll see y'all out there on the trail somewhere.